Hi everyone and welcome. Jenny Marples here from pushingtherightbuttons.blogspot.com. So I'm back today with a new tutorial video for you. Um, this is on behalf of the Frilly and Funky Challenge blog. It's part of their Saturday Showcase uh, series where we, the whole design team gets to share um, hints and tips about some of the products that you'll find in store at the Funky Junkie Boutique. Today's uh, tutorial focuses on Tim Holt's new collage paper from the Ideology range. It was a huge hit at the recent Creativation show and featured on a number of the projects in the Ideology booth. Um, and somebody has specifically requested that I show how I went about painting um, this uh, collage paper to create the backgrounds for the journal that I made. So let's make a start and you'll see here we've got a lovely bright sunny day today. Uh, spring is truly springing in the UK at last which I for one am very happy about. So let's start with the equipment. First of all I have, this is um, an entire run of the collage paper design. What I mean is this is the extent of the design and then you get repeats of that. Um, it's about six inches tall and the roll itself measures six yards which is five and well about five and a half meters roughly so as you can imagine you've got an awful lot to go at. Um, the collage paper itself is of a fine tissue quality, um, but having said that, because it is actual paper rather than tissue, it's very sturdy and very good for painting on. The other things that I use, so you can see underneath here I have some kitchen roll. That um, is to catch any excess paint that may go through the paper as I'm painting. I've also got some fine brushes here, detail brushes. Um, I find that those are much easier for getting into the smaller details and I've also got a palette here um, with some of my favourite distress paint colours in. I'm using distress paint because it's got a slightly more open time than some of the other chalky paints uh, which means that it won't dry quite so quickly so it means that it's very good for blending. Um, but having said that, it still dries uh, with reasonable speed. It's not like you're going to have to wait around for 24 hours for this to dry out. I've used the flip top caps, which you'll have seen um, before. Um, very easy now to be able to just pour this straight into your palette and get working. And if um, a handy hint for if you are using a palette like this and you don't manage to use all the paint over in one night, what I would suggest is using um, some more kitchen towel, um, but actually making sure that it's very, very damp, laying it on top and adding um, cling wrap over the, over the whole thing just to seal out any air. And that actually retains moisture and stops the paint from drying out overnight. This palette has actually indeed been left, left out overnight and is still fit for purpose this morning. So that's just a suggestion and obviously that will depend based on whereabouts in the world and what your climate is like. So let's get started. First of all, um, show you some, some fairly um, basic colouring. Um, so I'm going to start with the finest brush that I have and we're going to move into this area and just finish off. You'll see I've already made a start on this. I've picked out the colours that I wanted to use um, and it's nice to be able to coordinate those at the beginning um, if you are going to use the whole run. Having said that, if you then pull each element out, um, you, you don't have to worry so much. You can then coordinate them further on down the line when you come to use your project. Now I'm going in here with, this is Mode Lawn and I'm going on to this um, fern pattern. And you'll see I'm just working in with my brush and just taking small amounts. I don't go over the lines, I stay within the lines. And I'm just using one colour on this very delicately. It doesn't take a great deal, um, just like colouring in. Um, very, very therapeutic this. You can get lost in your own world just colouring in these different floral images and having some fun working out which colours you want to use. Why am I using Distress Paint um, other than the fact that, as I said, it has this um, open time, which means that you've got um, 
you've got a little bit of wiggle time with getting it in the right place, moving it around and also being able to blend it slightly, which I'll show shortly. The other reason is once this is dry, it's acrylic paint. Um, so once it's dry, it remains in place. It doesn't move. Um, it's permanent. So when you then come to apply your um, distress collage medium to actually stick the collage paper to your different surfaces, the paint colour itself isn't going to move. It's going to remain in place. So you won't get any blurring, which you might do um, if you say if you use distress inks. Um, you know, if you put a wet medium over the top, because of the distress properties within the inks and the oxides, they are actually going to move. So you'll see it's very easy to be able to paint these. OK, and on the reverse, if I just turn that over, you can see you've now got the the colour um, of the fern leaves here. Um, you've got that colour coming through, but obviously the design itself is on the front and that's the part that shows really nicely. I would mention at this point that the um, the colours themselves, I've used candied apple and um, aged mahogany here. I'll go over and show you a little bit of that now. Um, it looks quite chalky at this stage and you begin to wonder whether or not the colour is going to show through. But um, trust me, when it comes to then applying with your Distress Collage Medium onto your projects, that colour is going to pop. Um, so just go in with the colours, what you'll actually see when the project is finished and applied to your um, chosen base. What you see is what you get. That colour will be there. So let's just show you some of this, um, this poppy. As I say, I'm calling it a poppy, but it could be any number of other flowers there. Um, they don't have to be specific names to them. I've already gone into the centre uh, with some mustard seed here and coloured in the stamens. And now I'm going in and adding some shading onto the, uh, onto the flower itself. I'm starting first of all with the, this is aged mahogany. And I'm sort of roughly following where the shaded areas are on the design. I'm not trying to be too artsy and um, think about where the light directions are and all of that business. Um, just adding a little bit of shading wherever those black lines are um, and the design which is already here can do the work for me that way. So just pulling that colour around. Now if the paint um, so, for example, I can go over the top of the, um, the mustard seed here because it's dry um, and because that is the base layer, that is the colour that's going to show through on the surface. So, in effect, you're painting in reverse. What I mean by that is the first colour that, color that goes down is going to be your top colour and anything that goes on after that is going to be um, your lower base colours. Um, so, in a sense, you're working... As I said in reverse. I'm doing this this way because I want that shadow to show through but also because um, I actually then want to do some blending with it while it's still still wet. And when I say wet I haven't diluted any of this paint I've kept it um, I've kept it straight out of the bottle I find it works beautifully that way I don't really want it running any further um, and it's it's beautifully stable at that stage um, to be able to sit comfortably on the surface without running anywhere. Now I'm going straight in here. This is Candied Apple, um, one of my favourite of the Distress Reds. And I'm actually using that um, brush to go in and to blend into the aged mahogany here. Just to get slightly less definition on the lines and add to the more. Um, the more blended look, the more realistic look for the for the poppy. As I said, just taking my time, going up to the edges, and then pulling over that paint and blending through. And I don't have to worry about coming in now that the um, 
now that the uh, mustard seed in the middle is nice and dry because that won't it won't affect the colour in any way. There we go. You see it's it's quite quick to be able to get an area covered. Obviously I use a, a slightly larger brush if I want to cover more of an area quickly. Um, but having said that, they're not they're not some of the largest brushes you can get. This isn't this is still quite fine work, but very enjoyable. If you enjoy colouring with your coloured pencils and pens, um, then this is very, very much similar. Um, and as you can see, it's it's not messy. It's not, you know, you're not going to end up with a, a craft mat full of gunge everywhere and you don't need to put gloves on. This is nice and clean on the end of your brush. And a really therapeutic way of, of colouring in these these flowers, these images. There we go. Just a nice fine layer there, and that's all covered in. And then I'll just go back over. Oh, there's a little bit there that needs covering. If you do smudge any for any reason, if you go over an area and you don't get quite the precise um, precise line that you, what you want you can actually go in with a some water and some tissue just to damp off just to remove any excess there that's better okay so that's got that there nicely there we are being the perfectionist that I am there we go that's better that's got it. So just, yes, going in and dabbing, bearing in mind, I know I've got paint on the rest of it. And there we are. OK, so let's just show you again, show you that from the right side over. As I said, you won't see much of that colour difference until I then actually go and apply it to my project. Um, but that's when the difference will really show. Um, I'll just do one more piece just so you can see how that comes together, the, um, the colour for the, uh, the peony. Again, I've used the mustard seed in the middle and um, to create the highlights, um, I've then, to, sorry, the, to create the shadows, I should say, I've gone in with, um, this is worn lipstick. And again, don't have to worry about being accurate. And you can go back, as you'll see, I've already previously painted some of this um, just so that you could see sort of colour in progress, as it were. And you can go back in because obviously once the paint has dried, you're not going to affect what else is there. So I can go back over here with the mustard seed and really not worry about affecting that underneath colour. Just dotting in some of the shading here. And it's a lovely way this of being able to add the colours that you want to. So for example, if you've got some of the, the Dapper um, collection, which are slightly more masculine colours, um, you can use the same backgrounds but give them a feminine twist by adding um, some of this painted collage paper or you can just use it as in the, the black and white form if you'd prefer and just adding this over the top just give that floral element. People were asking me how, um, how I began putting the journal together and actually this was the way I started with the journal. I started by opening the collage paper and just sitting down and painting and then when I took the I used the memoranda paper for that one and I found that once I started applying it to the to not just the paper but also some of the pieces of ephemera and everything it all just very quickly came together um, you know sort of it it, uh, it told its own story now I'm just going to go in now with a larger brush again and while the worn lipstick is still wet I'm able to go in and move it slightly and get more of a blend and this is spun sugar you can see Tim's colours do work beautifully together um, 
you know obviously take your take a little time just to work out what colors you think are going to to coordinate nicely and if you are doing shadows then keep them within the same color family so reds pinks whatever uh, but uh, they all do work really nicely together so just pulling out that color now and again you can see when you're working in the middle you can actually color cover quite a big area the top of this flower doesn't have a specific line for the edge of the petal so I'll just go in and make, make a nice arced area and again that's that's all good there we are and that won't take too long to dry and then I'll have a completed flower ready to go so again let's just turn that over for you so you can see there you are we have um, sort of more definition around the shaded areas. I think that shows up slightly more on the pink. OK, so very quickly now, just going to show you for anyone who hasn't seen, um, as I said, I've shown how on a previous video how to apply the um, collage paper to uh, in larger chunks. Um, to um, fabric and it's exactly the same method for adding to um, to paper um, card uh, the baseboards the baseboard frames um, and in particular the new let me reach one over one of the new collage frames these are absolutely beautiful a really great size um, perfect for working on the etc tags um, but also on the back of old books and that kind of thing really substantial um, so perfect as you can imagine for layering these pieces on so I've got um, a, a flower here that's already been painted and dried now if I wanted to add that I could just go in and, and try and stick down the whole piece but actually it's far easier just to to break a piece off um, take out the element that you actually want so the best way of doing that is to take I've got my detailer um, water brush here and I'm just going in and drawing round obviously the water comes straight out of this of this pen just um, this brush I beg your pardon and I'm just going in now and soaking the areas that I where I want to tracing a line almost around where I want to tear once I've done that um, it's very easy then to go in and just um, pull the tissue and you'll find that it sorry the collage paper and you'll find that it um, separates really very very quickly very easily it doesn't tear into your painted image um, because you've got that line that you're now following so just pull away very gently that's it said it's nice strong stuff this it's um in the sense that it's it's very easy to use it's not it doesn't rip in quite the um sometimes i find with uh, napkins for example they can tear so quickly that they you actually do tear into the image but you can see there how easy that was to to pull apart and now if you're going to lay it onto your um onto your frame for example you can go about doing that very easily um, and just have a part of the image and don't forget that you can actually add several images and also you can layer them up too um, so if you start to, to this is the whole point of, of collaging really that you're you're adding different layers to your work um, so remember you can add for example let me just pop the the fern down behind here um, so I've got that fern that's already been painted and then I can add in the flower don't be afraid to overlap the elements stick one on first and then stick the other over the top um, to create a really pretty uh, pattern and effect and of course they will also work over your let's just show you over the top of your um, your existing papers as well and the design from underneath will show through beautifully because this will then um, the the paper will actually the collage paper will mold into um, and disappear into the background paper as long as you make sure that you've got plenty of distress collage medium down and you brush it out thoroughly with the distress collage medium brush okay so i hope that's helped today and give you some 
hints and tips and ideas on how to use this collage paper with your distress paints. Um, if you have got any questions, please just um, leave a message at the end of this video. Um, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, make sure you subscribe, give me a bit of a thumbs up and make sure that you come back to see all of the other um, wonderful um, techniques and tips and hints that are shared as part of the Frilly and Funky um, Saturday Showcase. All right, thank you for joining me today. Take care. Goodbye.